welcome to Epiphytic Cacti. Today, let's take a look at Ripsalis paradoxa. Ripsalis paradoxa is the species that I hear of the most often of people struggling with in terms of not being able to root the cuttings or issues with the plant, I guess, once it's kind of established in terms of watering. And it makes sense. Ripsalis paradoxa is a little bit unique because its branches are so thick. It has very, very thick branches. And I think that because they're chain linked the way that they are, it can make them seem less thick than they actually are. So it's one that is probably going to need a little bit less water than some of the other thinner branched Ripsalis that are out there. Ripsalis paradoxa is endemic to Brazil. It has little white flowers. They can be yellowish, but it has little white white to yellowish flowers that bloom out of the aerials here. So where these little chain links are, you can see that there are little aerials at the base of these little links. The flowers, they bloom out of there. The berries are a reddish color. There could be issues where this might get mixed up with something else. Let's take a little bit of a closer look. Ripsalis paradoxa, like I said, it's, it's kind of in a world of its own. However, this is the subspecies paradoxa. So this is Ripsalis paradoxa subspecies paradoxa. There is another subspecies. The other subspecies would be Septon trionalis. Now we come into all kinds of issues in terms of identification because this gets a little bit weird. There is something that floats around out there, which people like to call the, it's like the mini paradoxa. There's a group of species here that get really, really confused. The plant that they're talking about more often than not is Rupsalis pacheco leonis subspecies catenulata. And there is another one, which is Rupsalis pacheco leonis subspecies pacheco leonis, which I don't really have. So... That can lead to some serious confusion. Ripsalis paradoxa, super easy to identify because it's always gonna have these much thicker branches. However, I'm sure that some, somehow, somewhere, it could happen that these get a little bit mixed up. So I'm gonna show the difference between some of these. This plant here was started from cuttings. I have an old video where I started this and you can see it's grown very long. So if you wanted to know how to root or start these, you can check that video out. There are a few things that I'm gonna point out about these two is that when they are grown in very high light, like this branch right here would have been grown in a higher light, the chaining gets more tight. And when the light decreases, the chaining will elongate. You know, that's just kind of etiolation happening there. And that is something to know because when it comes down to it, some of these guys, they can actually end up looking a little similar. So when we're looking at Pacheco leonis canulata, we are actually looking at something like this, right? And this is one that looks like it was grown in very good conditions, very good, very high light conditions. And the thing is, is that these stems do look a little bit thicker. You know what I mean? Like you can see here, they definitely look thicker, um, but they are still nowhere near as thick as Ripsalis paradoxa. Paradoxa is definitely the beast here. So that's one, and I have a few different ones here that we can look at. This one here also looks like it had been grown in very high light because you can see just how tight the chaining is in comparison to even the first one that I showed. It's got very tight chaining, but you can see why people would call it like the mini paradoxa, right? Because it looks like a small version of paradoxa. However, the flowers are even a different color. The flowers on Pacheco leonis, either of them, the flowers on them will actually be more like a brownish or a pinkish color. You wouldn't think that two plants could look so similar and yet be classified as something completely different. So here's another one that has new growth. This one was more recently started. You can see it probably wasn't, it probably wasn't in as high light because you can see the chaining is not so um, typed and it's not so prominent. So it's just a little bit elongated here and you can see how the cuttings were started. They were just kind of jammed in there. So these two were really started at the same time and you can see just how much thinner these branches are. But you can still see that they do have a very strong resemblance. Now when we get into it, if we take a look at the other subspecies, I unfortunately only have a very small plant of this, but it'll work. This one is 
Ripsalis paradoxa subspecies septum trionalis. And you can see that it does have these chaining on these new branches. So it does have this, the, the linking, the chain linking, but it is really kind of odd looking. It's elongated, a little bit weird. You can see on the older branches just how different this looks. It looks like a very, 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 very stretched out version of this. And I will say that it has much different kind of growth pattern in terms of it like angles these out and then it will grow and it will angle them out and it will angle them out. So it does not really look quite the same. So sometimes you can get a little bit surprised because I think that our minds will trick us a little bit into believing that uh, Pacheco leonis subspecies Canulata is the subspecies Septum trionalis. Just because of the similarities, because when we see Septum trionalis, it doesn't our mind doesn't quite see them as being so closely related. However, they are. And this guy has bloomed and it does have yellow blooms. So the blooms are a yellowish color. It's very interesting. Um, I got this little guy shortly after. I don't think that it produced a berry though. But yeah, shortly after I bought this guy, it decided to bloom and I was very excited because this is a very, 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 very hard species to get a hold of. I had a really tough time tracking this down. Here's the other one that I got. I got this one as a full grown plant here. So this one hasn't really been with me for very long and it is a much larger plant. I hope that you've enjoyed Rupsalis paradoxa, subspecies paradoxa, as much as I have. Thank you for watching and happy cacti growing.